Well, all right, here we are, here we are. I am Pastor Bobby D. Hamlin. You see my face, you know this is Move Monday. Oh, yes, it is. And I welcome you back once again at this place where this is an assembly of encouragement where we come together on Mondays and encourage one another to move. You can see right now, I'm in one of my old stomping grounds. I am in the gymnasium. Oh, yes, I am. I got my sunrise six mile in. I went and ran, and you know, you know I'm going to run. I got my run in, and now I'm in the gymnasium. I'm in the gymnasium with, with a young brother named, named, named Vin. Oh, if you can see Vin over here shooting. And the young sister over there named Sophia over there shooting. Uh, just two young people. They're out of school. They're out of school because the Astros won the World Series, so they're out of school. And they're in the gym. So you know when I finish here on this move Monday, I'm going to go give them the business. I'm going to go give them the work. Because I see them playing. They're young. They got some shots. But they don't have game. And although I am an old dude and I don't play basketball anymore, I still remember how to do it. It's like riding a bike. If you've done it one time, you can do it again. That jumper always works. That jumper will work into perpetuity. I'll still be able to shoot that jumper. And now they got something called a three-point shot. So you know what? I was shooting three and four-point shots before they ever called them three and four, three, four shots. I just was shooting it anyway. We used to call it bombs, shooting bombs. Well, I've been shooting bombs all my life. But listen, all that is, is on the sidebar. Here's the real deal. It's Move Monday. And I want to encourage you guys to move. Let me begin by giving a big old shout out to all of those I've heard from. Those of you who become stretchers. What do I mean? You've begun to work your body. You've understood that as you get a little bit older, a little longer in the tooth, it is imperative that you stretch your body. You found your foam ro rollers. You found your rubber bands and you started to stretch. What a wonderful thing. You've learned to really release the, the tightness within your body. That constitutes a move. So I give you a big old shout out to all those who have decided to stretch. Some of you listening right now, don't just start doing it. Don't just go out there and, and pull a, a hamstring and pull a muscle. No, take the time to be disciplined and stretch. Not just two seconds, five seconds, but stretch. Take 15 minutes, 20 minutes and just stretch. And for all of the kickboxers, let me give you a big shout out too. I've heard from you also. You're out there and you're kickboxing. You've been kicking stuff all your life. Now you have the authority and you have the location and you have the training and you have the equipment to kick. And, you, and guess what? And you're paying for a class to go and kick somebody or kick something. Isn't that a wonderful, wonderful thing? So all you kickboxers who've learned how to kick and swing and swing and kick. Let me give you a big old shot because that constitutes a move. You are moving and you're moving in a mighty, mighty way. And that's a wonderful, wonderful thing in which you are doing. So let me just tell you that now, while you're making the move, I want you to move on over to YouTube. Yesterday, I started a new sermon series at the Friendship Church entitled, We Are Better Together. It's a series about relationships. It's a series about connectivity. It's a series about, a, about the koinonia about us being in fellowship together, the body of Christ, and what that really means. About not just simply just, just shuffling into a sanctuary and shuffling out, but to actually do life together and to care about one another, to bear one another's burden, to love one another, to be willing to, to, to be grieved with one another, to help one another, to rejoice with one another. That's what it's really about. It's about us becoming what God always meant for us to be, and that is to be connected in a relational community. Now, I know that's tough because many times outside the church, we don't connect with anybody anyway. And the last time we got connected, it backfired on us. But yet we're going to trust God for a brand new thing. And so I preached yesterday and I talked about is that, that we're going to get through this. I talked about the importance that, that, that in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 3 through 5, Paul calls God the God of all comfort. And we talked about comfort. And we said on yesterday that comfort is not simply just you God patting you on the head like Pavlov's dog or something comfort is not simply about you getting milk and cookies comfort is about God being able to give you inner strength in the midst of your outer crisis Paul writes this as an apostle in crisis there's chaos in his life there's condemnation in his life yet God gives Paul comfort now here's the caveat here's the amen here's the great shout Paul says that God comforts us in all of our affliction that we can then turn around and comfort somebody else with the same comfort we have received. That God doesn't waste his comfort. And so God doesn't also don't want to waste your pain. What, how God has comforted you, and some of you watching right now, God has truly, truly comforted you. You've been through some things people can't dream or imagine. You've had some sleepless days, some sleepless nights, and yet by the grace of God, he's pulled you through. Now, what are you doing with that? 
God wants you to take that and pass it on. Don't miss that. He wants you to pass it on. You pass on everything else. God wants you to pass on his comfort. On Wednesday night, I'm going to be talking to friendship about what that looks like of how you can pass on the comfort of God and, and how you can do that in such a way in which it affirms, it encourages, it blesses somebody else. But God wants you today to understand he's a God of all comfort. And as being a God of all comfort, all comfort. Now, don't miss that. All comfort. God is. That means that, guess what? That, that, that God does something that your prescriptions can't do. God does things that your psychiatrist can't do. God, God does things that your political preference cannot do. That God is a God of all comfort. Don't just listen to me. Receive what I am saying. God wants to do something in your life. He wants to comfort you because you're in it. You're deep down in something right now. And God in his sovereignty knows that you're in it. But God wants you to know now that you're in it, what are you going to learn from it? And what are you going to do with it? And if I bring you out and bring you through, is it just about you? Or will you also reach back and bring others along with you? There's somebody in your circle of influence right now who needs you, that's counting on you. They may have never told you, but they need you to reach out and bring them through too. You've been through so much. You've encountered so much. You've survived so much. And now you're prospering. God says, not just your prosperity, share the prosperity. God wants somebody else. I'm getting ready to share this whooping right now on Vin and Sophia in this gym. I'm about to put this jumper all up in their face. Oh, yes, I am. But it's imperative that you understand what God is saying today. He's a God of all comfort, and you will get through this. You may not think you're going to get through it. You may feel like this is the worst it ever been. No, we serve a God who's been through the worst because our great God is Savior Jesus Christ. He died. He was buried, but he rose on the third day. And the power of the resurrection is he's able to resurrect you in your situation. He's able to do what you never thought can be done. The Lord is a miraculous God, and the Lord is able to lift you up. But don't just come up by yourself. we got to be relational connected I know what you're saying all oh, being relationally connected is risky being vulnerable is risky being able to open my home and open my life is risky I know it's risky but the last time I checked Christ took the risk also when he died on Calvary's cross for your sins and my sin and now he says I want you to reciprocate I want you also to go and share to open your life that as God has comforted you now your responsibility is to go and comfort somebody else we are better together. And at the Friendship Church, we're going to dig deep. We're going to dive deep. We're going to pray deep. We're going to love deep. We're going to hurt deep. But we're going to believe that God who allows us to go deep will also raise us up from the depths that we can live like he said we already are. And that's more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. You need to get in on what I'm saying. You need to buy into what the Bible has already said. You need to receive it and appropriate it in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, where did Liv Van go? Van, I see you working on the jumper. I, that's an air ball, Ben. That's an air ball. You need to work on that jumper. I'm going to show you how to put the ball in the hole. But listen, we're going to learn how to put the ball in the hole together. And as a body believes that friendship, we're going to do this thing. Because I want to tell you, I want to remind you, the God who we serve is the God of all comfort, not some comfort, not most comfort, not a little bit of comfort, not a teeny bit of comfort, but all comfort. And we thank God today. It's move money, y'all. Go and move. Go and move. Bring somebody with you. Encourage somebody to get up and go with you. Do something different today. This is your day. I'm in the gymnasium. I'm most of the time. I'm running, doing stuff. There is Sophia right there. Hey, Sophia, how you doing, my sister? You doing all right? You ready to hoop? You ready to hoop? It's move money, y'all. I'm going to see you at the Friendship Church on Wednesday night. It's a place to begin again. But I want you to know we're going to get through this by the grace of God. What a mighty God we serve. Ain't he all right? Put a praise right there. I'll see you Wednesday night at the Friendship Church. A place to begin again. It's a great, great day.